Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Service starts on time of night.
thank you, Lord. I praise your name. For you brought me through so many things. I want to take the time to praise your name.
Bless the Lord today. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Yes. So, we were hearing in Bible study, Brother Painter was talking to us a little bit today about a rest, being able to come in here and to feel that rest in the Lord, to be able to, we want to ultimately rest in Him, rest from our labors, no longer work in our flesh, be totally submissive to Him. Little by little, day by day, that's what we're moving toward. Thank the Lord we can come in here and we can receive that peace that passes all understanding. We can come in here and no matter the trials and tests, we can feel that wonderful spirit of the Lord washing over. That washing of the water by the word. I think uh, Paul talks about that times of refreshing. When those times of refreshing are needed, when that water is available, let's get in. Like that pool of Bethesda, whenever, <clears throat> you know, they had to wait for that angel to come and trouble that water. And then it was like, it was a lottery. Who's ever there? Right. Buddy, whoever's the quickest, you better get in. Right. Get that touch. Well, thank the Lord. It's not just, we're not just waiting on that one. But as that water gets troubled here today, as it's that spirit starts flowing, we can all dive in and get a touch to take us on through this week, through this month, and through the rest of the year. I praise God for that opportunity. How about you, saints? To have that 
that blessed hope. As um, we were today, you know, some of us, I know, uh, most of us have that heavy feeling on our heart. We know what our brother here on the platform, Brother Durham and his family right now, what they're uh, going through. And we pass our condolences on to him and to his family. And then our dearly, dearly loved brother, Brother Bud, being uh, laid to rest today. Um, those are those are heavy matters. Those are we're thinking about those, and we're going to miss them. But you know, uh, I think it was Paul was saying, but you know what? Uh, I think he said to the Thessalonian church, you know what? Hey, don't you? You're not like other people. Right. You don't you don't have to you don't have to mourn as other people mourn. Right. Why? Because there's hope. Right. Because we have a hope. We're going to see our brothers again. We're going to have that. They're going to have that opportunity to see God in their flesh and to finish out their course. Isn't that a wonderful? Wonderful vision that we have here today yeah. to know that, you know, though the skin worms eat this, though I go back to the ground, but thank the Lord, whenever he's, you know, it is that time when the, the church is restored, we're coming, we're coming back up. Woo. We're going to finish out this work and to receive that reward. Yeah. I thank the Lord for that today. I thank the Lord for that, that opportunity. But right now, those of us who can hear what I'm saying and what here comes, comes across here, hey, our work Right now is not finished. All right. uh, <laughs> I appreciate that, Brother Painter, when he brought up well, one of those that Brother Linger would say often about, you know, uh, uh, let's concentrate on the nasty now and now. Well, right now, this is, this is our right today. Today is the day of the Lord. Yes. Today is the day of salvation. Yes. I, don't, I don't have a promise for tomorrow. Uh, as he told the, the, the disciples at that point, uh, your time is always. You know, my time's not yet. I, I can't say that. My, my time is always. I haven't got that, that notice from the Lord that says, well, you're, you know, I've got to work for you that uh, I can't let you die. If I pick up a snake and it's a deadly one and it bites me, that may be the end. It might not be like Paul to go, oh, well, well, whatever, you know. <laughs> I'm not going to, and thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Right. I'm not going to go there. I'm not there yet. But you know what? So today, Today is the day that we have. Right now, we have this opportunity to lift up his name who is worthy to be praised. As I was uh, sitting there, I was thinking about um, having ears to hear and eyes to see. Having our, having our ears unplugged. You know, I don't want to be like our, our brothers and sisters. And you know, I'll tell you what, reading the Old Testament, uh, especially as I was younger, you know, sometimes you can get a little cocky. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe not used to Thompson, but I would read there. Psh, man, I can't believe the children of Israel. Man, what a bunch of goofballs. I mean, they just come across the Red Sea, and then they're like, oh, no, we don't have any food. You know, I mean, it's like, man, come on. God just provided. And then literally food, you know, it's like, um, I'd like some manna to go. And look, there it comes. And it just flows to the ground, and then they're picking it up. But then, oh, you know, well, we don't have vegetables. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, as long as it, and it said it tasted like honey, I'm thinking, it's like graham crackers falling from the sky. I mean, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good deal. I'm just, I'm just painting a picture there, but then the next thing you know, they're griping. But the older I've gotten, the, real, the more I've realized, oh, okay, well, that's human nature. <laughs> oh, no. You mean, you mean I've done that too? You mean I've went down that road and I've, God has blessed me left and right. Next thing you know, I'm like, but, but Lord. But Lord, as I, go, as I go to the refrigerator and I go to the pantry and they're both full and I go, but Lord, there's just nothing in here I want to eat, Lord. Oh, my life is so hard. Now I got to go down Chick-fil-A. But it's Sunday, I can't go. Oh, woe is me. What a horrible trial that is. And then I go to Dave's. And, well, it's closed too because it's Sunday there too. Oh, no. But thank the Lord we have these wonderful blessings. I want to lift him up each and every day. I want to lift him up and realize, God, I want to have ears to hear and eyes to see. Yes. I don't want to let my spirit get in the way and get that, uh, you know, as those ten spies came back with the gripes and the two, you know, came back with the grapes. That's right. I, don't, I don't want to be the ones with the gripes. I want to be like, you know what? There's amazing food. There's amazing things to be had. And yes, we are more than able to take the land because God is with us. I, I want to be with him. You know what I'm saying? I want to be like, all right, you and me, Lord, let's go. You know, you go first. <laughs> I'll let you take the way, Lord. So that's what we have here today. I want, to, I want to keep my eyes on the prize. I want to keep my eye toward the goal. I want to realize I'll keep, keep pressing on. And even if that is today and this day, if, it's, if I move forward 
six inches. Well, it's six inches closer than I was before. As long as I'm not making those steps back, right. you know, it's, it's, it's okay sometimes. You may have to step back sometimes. If, when you're going on a path, if any of you have, have enjoyed hiking before, when I was in Scouts years ago, we had a brand new senior patrol leader in Scouts. It's a little different. Uh, uh, all, the, all the young men are led by fellow young men. The adults are just overseers, but they're not, they're not getting involved. They're just making sure no one gets hurt and things like that. But they let the young men lead everything that's going on. And we went on this, what was supposed to be, 16-mile hike, which is still a lot. I'm sorry. I mean, today, I'm not doing that. Right? Forget that. You know, I'll go on a 16-mile drive around the park, but I'm not going on a 16-mile hike right I'm just being honest, okay? Uh, but that 16-mile hike, next thing you know, that 16 doesn't come and went. And it's like, you know, we're all starting to, oh, what's going on? Next thing you know, you know, it's 17, 18, 19. And then we're like, we're lost. And then, you know, bless his heart, the new senior patrol leader, and he's the one with the compass, and he's the one doing all this out. And he's like, I made a mistake. And we're all like, yes, you did. And we're, and we're, we're paying for it. So what did we have to do? We had to go back to those landmarks. We had to go back to where we knew we were on the right trail. And it took us time to get back there, but we were appreciative once we got back there because then we were able to line back up and realize where we needed to go to finish that hike. I believe it ended up being closer to a 20 to 22 mile hike by the time we were done. That was a long day, let me just tell you. But we finished and we had to go back, but we finally made it to that destination. Sometimes I may be going a certain way and then I start hitting that wall, and I'm like, oh, no, Lord, why, why? And the Lord's going, well, see the wall in front of you there? See, that's my path right there. But you chose to step over here and now hit your head on that. I mean, you know, what do you mean to do? So I have to go, oh, there is a wall right there. Who put that there? That's just amazing. And i got to step back and correct the course and move forward. So I want to have those eyes to see and those ears to hear. And when there's times of adversity, to consider, yeah. to realize, okay, Lord, what are you trying to say to me? Right. I want to be up on that mountain, and I want to be able to say, oh, you know what? Out, this, out there in this world right now, there's definitely there's storms and thunder and lightning and, and great earthquakes going on, but that's not for us. Right. That, is, that is God, but that's not for us. I want to listen to that still, small voice. And listen for the word of God, what he has for me in my life. And what I can then give to my family. And as each one of these brothers and families come together and we're listening for that, then we're going the correct direction that God wants us to. And thankfully we have a ministry that we can yield our hearts to and submit as they submit themselves to God. And, and have that compass that's set like a flint and heading toward that great reward that we're looking for to, to be a part of the bride of Jesus Christ. I'm so thankful for that opportunity today and for that hope. Uh, I will take us to prayer, but first I want to welcome two visitors that came in. We, we, do do y'all love company? I love company. We had some company this weekend that um, was a little bit planned. I knew about it. It was a surprise to my wife, but uh, it was funny because she's like, we were trying to keep it a total secret. But there were some things that came up that we weren't able to. And um, she's like, well, I'm so glad that I found out because now i got to go grocery shopping. So I guess it was a good thing that she found out at the last possible moment and she could still get grocery shopping done because even though when I got there, that'd have been, she'd have been happy. Then she'd have been like, oh, I don't know what we're going to eat. So it all worked out. But when you have company, it just makes you feel good. Well, we've got some brothers that come in here. And um, is, it, is it Davey? Da Dave, and then... Um, Petiot? Let's give him a hand, folks. Appreciate y'all coming in here. This is, this is a place of worship. Come in and, and appreciate seeing y'all raising your hands and, and swaying to the music. That's what we appreciate here, being able to worship God in spirit and in truth yeah. and having that uh, liberty here because where the spirit of God is, there is liberty. Liberty to worship him. Liberty to follow his leading. Liberty to listen to that still, small voice. So today, as I was mentioning earlier, let's, um, let's continue to pray for the Nacogdoches Assembly. Um, 
just like with any other passing, you know, the initial days are, are very difficult, but it's those days, weeks, and months after where, the, where some real trials and tests come into play. So let's keep them on our heart. Let's be praying for Brother Smith. Also, we know Brother Bud, Bud, Brother Bud was a very close friend to him, and we know the impact there. And uh, let's keep our ears and eyes open and see what God is saying to us uh, as a church, as a general body, and continue to, to seek his guiding. And then um, also, I've got an update, but um, does anyone know how Brother Dial and uh, Brother Darren and his wife are doing? Well, let's continue to, to lift them up as well. Um, I think of Sister Bella Vili. Um, I think of... Um, Maddie, I think of Maddie. We would definitely want to lift her up. Yeah. Oh, it's t tomorrow. Where? Tomorrow. Is it a procedure or is it? There, Maddie from the um, Dallas Assembly is having surgery tomorrow. And uh, let's pray for her and the doctors to guide her their hands, but also for uh, Brother David and Sister Krista Perry. Um, Let's, let's really lift them up through that. Go ahead, Brother Michael. <clears throat> so let's pray for Sister. Yes, yes. As I mentioned Brother Durham and his family and the decisions that they're undertaking. And then Sister Elder, and she, is she having or has had a procedure? She had a procedure. She had a defibrillator put in uh, since Friday. Okay. And, uh, and then she's having her, six to eight weeks, she's going to have an ablation procedure done as well. Okay, so she had a procedure on Friday, the defibrillator put in, and then she's having ongoing procedure for the next six to eight weeks. And also, Pray for Sister Cindy and some of the decisions that are being made at this time. Uh, let's lift her up a lot on her plate as well. Sister Durham. <clears throat> Let's remember Sister Abraham uh, is asking for our prayer, and we'll continue to lift up Jonathan in her stead. Um, who else has a new? Let's, yes, let's remember Sister Donna as well. Did you have something to say, Sister John? October 5th? Let's remember Sister Donna on October 5th. We'll be praying for her as well. And that's the same procedure, right, that Sister Elder had? The defibrillator put, being put in. Let's remember that as well. We'll be praying for her. Uh, Sister Hannah, did you have your hand up? Well, that's a beautiful thing right there <clears throat> that she's reaching out for God that is a wonderful testimony right there Shannon what's her name Dana Beard let's remember let's remember Dana Beard and that request that she's reached out specifically for us to pray for her in this time <clears throat> Bridget Carter the, way for the young man from Academy. And then there's also a, a porter, right? Porter as well, okay. Uh, yes, and Mr. Galvez, my, my wife's brother Daniels, <clears throat> definitely needs prayer. Let's continue to lift him up. Pray for his request here in relation to disability. Uh, Sister Jerry? But, all right. Well, Jerry's got an ox in the ditch. We uh, definitely understand that. We'll be praying for him. <clears throat> and uh, I don't see Sister Sandra here. Is she here? Or is... Okay, well, let's, let's lift her up as well. So, uh, oh, she, she left already? Oh. 
Well, today was her birthday too. Oh man, I was we were gonna I wanted to embarrass her real bad, but okay. All right, well, to, all right, well, let's let's pray for her. She's traveling the road, so let's let's remember Sister Janique. Yes, Sister Ann McGann, let's remember her as well. Still recouping, and uh, let's lift her up, Sister Crafton. And brother and Sister McGee. Yes. All right, so two neighbors, Sister Wilson, your mother, and then the McPhees. Let's continue to lift them up uh, and uh, be praying for them. And uh, maybe if every one of us send them a card, you know, they're going to have to like, oh, my goodness, they're going to have to answer one of them, right? So let's, let's reach out. Let's, let's, let's get that love across to them. Anyone else that we want to lift up here today? DJ? Yes, Brother Willard was a, was a good man there at um, Capital City. Let's uh, lift him up. He's in the hospital with, with COVID as well. And then two of her neighbors also as well. So <clears throat> if the uh, ushers would come forward to receive our tithes and offering, <clears throat> and then uh, if we'll go ahead and stand, take these needs before the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, our great physician. Oh, dear Jesus, thank you, Lord. God, we come to you, Lord. We lift up our voice to you, God, humbly before you. We bring them before the throne, dear God, at your feet. Lord, we are needy people. We love you. We need you, God. As your children, Lord, we're asking you for help. God, there's many healings that are needed, dear Jesus. There's comfort during these times of hurt. Oh, God, we come to you, Lord. We thank you for the hope that we have to be able to come to you for comfort and love and peace down inside. We ask, Lord, that you touch these different ones that have been mentioned here today. We ask you right now be with the Nacogdoches Assembly during this time of us losing our dear brother. God, touch them right now, Lord. Oh, God, touch them right now. Let them feel your spirit in that service today, dear God. Lift that church up, God. We understand, Lord. We have empathy for them, Lord. We understand what that is, dear Jesus. Oh, God, help them right now, Lord Jesus. The different ones that have been mentioned here, Lord. Oh, God, from cancer to heart problems, Lord, they mean nothing to you, God. Oh, God, we want to reach out and touch you today, Lord. To bring down heaven, Lord. Oh, to answer these needs, dear God. Lord, we ask you right now, Lord Jesus. Lord, without you, we have no hope. But you are our hope, Lord. Oh, God, the bright star, Lord, in our life, Lord. To lead us and guide us, Lord Jesus. We ask you, God, to cover us right here in this church today, Lord. Oh, God, to open our eyes. To open our ears, Lord. So we can hear what you're saying, God. Touch us deep down, Lord Jesus. Help us to create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit, God, that we can be effective in this city. Lord, we appreciate you and we thank you, Lord, for your mercy and grace. Jesus, what a blessing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. They will bring another change This old trouble world In the field of life Old man time Plows another furrow Around us things will happen they said once never could be the time and fate could never change this joy away from me or nothing can erase or take away this joy I have is mine the battle rages long and hard I'll stand and mark my time and though his fire and darts may pierce me I'll not once admit defeat 
I'll hold the banner high to the day I die and make this joy mine complete. Selfish hands reach out to grab things that I possess. Like blind man's hands, the reach and pass, the keys to real success. For only when a man is tired. Of this world, it's sin and strife. Can he share with me this joy I have and no eternal life? For nothing can erase or take away. Hold the banner high Till the day I die And make this joy of mine complete Stand and mark my time And though his fiery darts May pierce me I'll not once admit defeat I'll hold the banner high Till the day I die And make this joy of mine complete Selfish hands reach out to grab the things that I possess. Like blind man's hands, the reach and past, the keys to real success. Only when a man is tired. Of this world, it's sin and it's strife. Can he share with me this joy I have and no eternal life? For nothing can erase or take. Stand and mark my time And though his fiery darts May pierce me I'll not once admit defeat I'll hold the banner high Till the day I die Then make this joy of mine Praise the Lord. We're thankful for our visitors today, and, and uh, we 
we always appreciate uh, people who have an interest to serve the Lord. Making a decision to gather in the house of the Lord is uh, its an important decision, and it's not a decision that uh, people uh, t- make very often. Um, but usually it's with purpose, and so I hope you find your purpose today. The, um, the house of the Lord is a great place to be. One of our friends told us one time, and said, it's better than the best hospital in town. And that's true. I would rather be, David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. And so that's where I'd rather be. I'd rather be here serving and and learning and growing. Because I need salvation. And I don't say that in a careless way. I don't say that in a lighthearted way. I say it as a matter of truth. I know who I am to an extent. The writer said uh, that we're to try the reins of our heart to see whether they be of God. He said that really we don't even know our heart, but God does. He knows even the very thoughts and intents. And so I, I respect the fact that I don't, you know, I don't always know what motivates me. I don't always know what drives me or provokes me to make decisions or actions. But I do know this, that I'm following a great Savior and that he's given me provision uh, through his word and through his spirit where I could find salvation even for the wretched person that I am. And, you know, it, uh, we're longing for a day when sin becomes exceedingly sinful in our eyes, that there's, there's no mistake. Uh, David said, he asked the Lord to forgive him of his faults, even his secret faults. And we're longing for a day when there's no mistaking, even there's no misunderstanding that our faults are our faults and we clearly understand that they are. And it's not a matter really of pointing out our faults. That's not really what God's purpose is in salvation. His, his purpose isn't really about some sort of burning cauldron of torment or some finger, you know, reaching down from heaven and saying, "Ah, I got you, you know, I told you so. That's not really the kind of uh, love that God is uh, showing his people. In fact, just the opposite. Uh, I mean, when you consider that the world, you know, throughout the ages of time has been full of millions and millions and millions and millions of people. God's had all kinds of people he could have called upon to be his child, to be in his kingdom. And as I've already stated here today, that there's all kinds of people that are much more equipped with their talent levels and different things uh, than I am, perhaps, than you are. And so it's not really a matter of God just needing the best of the best, you know. This isn't a draft lottery where he's trying to recruit the greatest to play on his team. That's not really his motivation. In fact, just the contrary. Uh, He's, God's purpose is to save the lost, to save the sinner, to save the sick. That's his purpose. His purpose is to lift up the hands that hang down. And so, really and truly, if there's ever a a person, if there's ever an entity that's rooted for the underdog, it's God. God truly roots for you today. And, uh, you know, Paul told him, he said, you think too highly of yourselves. And it's true, we do, we get lifted up in pride, we think of ourselves greater than what we are. I read, I think, last week that we look in that mirror And we forget, you know, straight away of what manner of person we are. But I can tell you today that without the Lord, I'm lost. Without Him working in my life, there is simply no hope for me. Uh, Paul told him, he said, that you were lost and without God. And uh, so we know that that without Him, uh, the Gentile 
nation in particular had no hope. That's the finishing part. Without God and no hope. They had no hope. They had no promise. They had no future. But Jesus came and he died upon a cross so that all men might be saved. Praise God. He has no respect of persons. He's not mindful necessarily of your of how much money you have in the bank or your political status or your your uh, inheritance or your genetical your genetic status. He's not careful about whether or not you went to a good school or a bad school or in a good family or a bad family or a good neighborhood or a bad na- neighborhood or a good country or a bad country. That's not his purpose. His purpose today is to save you lost in your sin. That's his purpose. And I'm thankful today that he took the time for me that I heard him say, hey, hey, come here. Let me tell you about salvation. I'll never forget uh, growing up I like to relate stories to my past, I suppose. I hope you do too, because it helps remind you of where you came from and and why you're here today. I was a little boy. I guess I was probably about seven or eight years old, and I grew up six blocks from the city pool. And when I say six blocks, it's because I counted every block. Uh, I loved going to the city pool as a kid, and uh, it was... I just enjoyed it. Um, I'd swim in the morning on the swim team, and I'd swim in the afternoon just for fun. And, you know, they'd have to run me off until it's, when it closed. And so one day this group of, of young people came through from, from John Brown University, which is a Baptist school in Salem Springs. And they were witnessing to all the people in the pool. And so they were going around and they were talking to people about the Lord. I had been going to church faithful uh, as a young kid, as faithful as a young kid could be. But they asked me if I wanted to say the sinner's prayer. And I said, sure, that's, I'm glad to do that. And uh, so that's exactly what I did. And we went outside and, and uh, they had this, the, the pump house was in the ground and they had this aluminum cover which was like 10 feet long and 8 feet wide. It was, it was huge. It was, it was bright, shiny, aluminum, and it was so hot to touch in the, in the heat of the summer. They said, well, here, let's kneel down here. They didn't know what it was because they weren't from there. And, and we did. And it, it was hot. But you know what? I never forgot. I never forgot that moment. I never forgot that moment that I took the time to pray. I'm not sure if that's my <laughs> stomach. <laughs> yeah, I think it might be this microphone, Brother Joe. We might have to. thought maybe it was a, may have, there we go. I thought maybe it was an airplane. It's like, oh, what's going on outside? Um, I've been trying to get saved since I was a little kid. I'm trying to get saved right now. I'm trying to put my life in a condition where the Lord can talk to me. He's already called me. I want to be faithful in that, and I want to be chosen. I want to put my life in a, in a condition where he can speak to me, and that's really hard to do in today's environment. There's so much noise, digital noise, social media, the phone, text messaging, the radio, the television, chitter, uh, chit-chat, and, and uh, yeah, I was... There's Twitter and, and uh, um, you know, even amongst friends, there's just so much chattiness that goes on and there's just so much, so many things, so many voices to listen to. 
I'd like to get my life in a place where I can hear His voice. I'd like to get still long enough to where He can talk to me and give me uh, a peace about my decisions, a peace about the choices that I'm making, um, peace about maybe what I'm going through. In the third chapter of the book of Hebrews, the, um, in the first verse, he said, Holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostles and high priests of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him as also Moses was, and faithful as Moses was faithful in all his house. You know, there's something to be said about faithfulness. There's a lot of people, one of the most important things that you can do in your life is to be steady, to commit to your cause. Be faithful to what you believe to be true. He said, for, for this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses inasmuch as, as he hath built the house hath more honor than the house. Notice this next verse. For every house is built by some man, but he that built, it, built all things is God. God uses people. So if you're sitting here in this in the sound of my voice today, which you are, it's because God wants to use you to build something. God wants to use you to build His house. He said, every house is built by some man or woman, but he that built all things is God. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ, as a, as a son over his own house, whose house we are, whose house are we, if we hold fast the confidence in the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. You're his, saints of God, if you'll hold fast to that. If you'll not be shaken. Don't be soon shaken by a wind. Just every wind. Let me tell you something. The winds of, of uh, hypocrisy and, and false report blow every day. In fact... Those winds are what moves the flags on the staffs, if you will. Those, those winds are what's driving most of, of what you hear on the radio or the TV. I'm talking about the things that have no value to your life. The things that, that add nothing to you. For, I'm going to give you, for instance, and if this offends you, I apologize. But why should I care whether or not somebody takes a knee to the national anthem? Why should I care about that? In fact, why should I care if they score a touchdown? Why should I care if they make $10 million a year? Why should I care about any of those things? Those people don't even know my name. They wouldn't know me from anybody else. They don't know who I am. They don't know anything about me. So to make them relevant in my life is just a wasted effort. In fact, the most important thing I could do is concentrate on the people that do know my name. More importantly, the man that knows my name. If I'll put my, my confidence and my trust and my interest in my Savior, hallelujah. Just think what that would do for my life. Just think that would, what that would do for your life. He said, Moses was faithful in all his house as a servant. The sixth verse, but as Christ, as a son of his own house, Whose house are we if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end? Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the day of provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Don't let your heart be hardened, he said. Take heed. Let's see. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, They do always err in their heart, for they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath that they shall not enter into my rest. The significance here being that, that when we harden our hearts, when we refuse to learn and accept that I need to change or I need correction, there's no room for rest. 
There's no room, there's no place for you to just rest and relax in the hands of the Lord when you're sitting there with a hardened heart. When you, when you let a root of bitterness enter your life and it begins to take hold, take root in your life, it will prevent you from finding a place where you can rest in the Lord. He said, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you, in any of you, an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. God called you here for a reason. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. What's that old saying? Sin will take you uh, places you... Uh, how's that go? Sin will take you further than where you want to go and keep you longer than you want to stay. Sin will take you places you don't want to be in further than you want to go and longer than you want to stay. It's a deceitfulness. If we could only see sin exceedingly sinful, we would begin to understand that there's a deceit in it. It's, you know, it's a reward. It's a pleasure of sin for a season, but it's not a reward. It's just a pleasure. We're not after that. We're after a reward. We're after something that lasts. Something that carries from this life to the next. He said, exhort one another daily in the 14th verse, we are partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is said today, if you will, harden, if you will hear His voice, harden not your hearts, as in the days of provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. Howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. Brother Fisher already told us a little bit about that. How that even in the, in the, even in the midst of victory, don't you just, I start to use a strong word, and I don't want to do that because I don't want to make someone feel bad about being guilty of this. But isn't it better? How about that? Isn't it better when you're in the midst of victory that you just enjoy the victory? Isn't it better that when you're in the midst of victory that you just take the time to enjoy the victory? Sometimes if we're not guilty, we'll sit there and say, but, oh, it could have been this, or it could have been that, or you didn't say this, or you didn't go that. And we, we, if we're not careful, we've taken victory and we've just thrown it aside because we focused on the negative. Don't harden your hearts. If you've come through the wilderness, enjoy that. Reflect upon it. Let your testimony be uh, a witness, an encouragement to you that God touched your life and delivered you. As Brother Michael sang that song to us, that you stood in the presence of, of evil. I can't remember exactly how that chorus went. Uh, but something to that effect that, that nothing would prevent you from standing. He said here in the 17th verse that, that God was grieved 40 years wasn't, and he was with them that had sinned whose carcasses fell in the wilderness. They didn't make it out. And, and to whom swear he that, he that they should not enter into his rest but to them that believe not. If you are walking in a spirit of fear and doubt and unbelief, one thing you can be sure of, you will not enter into the Lord's rest. The Bible says that everything that's done without faith is sin. Why? Because it's unbelief. We see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. The, the world, it, the, our nature, my nature, will tell you, oh, it's not true. You didn't get that. God didn't do that for you. Who is God? You know, my mind, there's times I get intimidated by the, by the comprehension of what God is. All right? So just give you a little tidbit. I will never be an astronaut. Okay? Let's just get that out. 
in the open. The very the sheer thought of looking down and seeing the earth from the sky that high? Uh, no. There was a there was a guy recently that that rose up in some sort of hot air balloon, and then and then parachuted off of it just before he got into the one of the outer layers of the atmosphere. I can't I can't remember who that was. Anyway, he videoed it live. I nearly got sick watching it. I can't stand stuff like that. I can, now, I can fly in an airplane. I don't necessarily like it. Uh, you know, I respect Brother Smith, but I don't think I'd ever be a pilot. Um, if, I cl- if I'm hiking like I was this week, look, I'll get close, but I'm not getting on the edge, you know. There's, cer- there's certain things that I'm not going to do, and I probably will never jump out of an airplane. I can go up to Mount Magazine and watch them hang glide, but I'm never going to get on one. Uh, those, there's certain elements of life that, that are not going to happen. Um, and so when I think about God, I think, well, God, he, he's bigger than the earth, right? If, if uh, uh, who was the first man that landed on the moon? If Neil Armstrong was on the moon and he prayed a prayer, God heard him, right? He said, though I made my bed in the depths of hell, thou, thou art there. So, you know, whether in the sea or in the air, God knows. So, God, he could hear us on the moon if we take a trip to Mars, which I don't plan on going. Um, he'll hear us there. If, you know, whatever planet, if, if we're swinging, you know, if we're dangling our feet off, uh, off the moon and, and, you know, dipping our hand in the stars, he'll hear us there. God's big. I mean, then what? So well, let's say we live a million years, ruling and reigning with Christ. Then what? A million and two years. Ten million. Then what? A billion years. Then There's no end to God. So my mind can't handle that. It just drives me bananas. <laughs> I, just, I just can't really think beyond this life other than heaven, which I'm looking forward to. My point being, though, is I don't want my limitations to put God in a box. I don't want to let, put, let my insecurities put God in a box. You say, well, in, your insecurities. Yeah, I'm insecure about, you know, what happens after a billion years. What happens after two billion years. That, stuff like that annoys me because I, I can't process how it goes, you know, how it will go. But I'm also insecure about other things. So, well, like what? Well, you know, I may be a little insecure about saying the wrong thing. I may be a little insecure about dealing with an emotional hang-up or a physical hang-up. I may be insecure about uh, not having an answer in a certain circumstance or not making enough money or not whatever the case may be, dealing with a health problem. But I don't want to let that put God in a box to where I'm guilty of unbelief. And you shouldn't either. You should say, I believe, Lord, like that man said. Help thou my unbelief. That's what you should say. You should take the time when you pray to let God speak to you in a moment of rest And it's okay that you don't have the answer or the solution to your situation. It's even better, though, when you believe that He'll see and understand and can meet your needs. Saints of God, He is a mighty God. And there is nothing too hard for Him. And He's not calling on us to to be some sort of super person, uh, you know, like like Superman or whatever, Superhero, you, he's, I've said already, he's not looking to create a draft of the greatest of the greats. That's not his intention. His intention is to develop a love and a kindness and a truth in our hearts that causes us to love unconditionally like he does and bring salvation for his people. Mm. Isn't that great? Hey, I'm not talking about a low-expectation God. Don't misunderstand me. 
I'm talking about a God that has great expectations for you. And with you and the Lord, nothing's impossible. He's knocking. Are you willing to let him in? Are you willing to trust him with your life? I want to turn over to uh, the book of Psalms. 116. And I, I don't, you can read aloud if you like, but let's read it together. I want to read maybe the first nine verses. Let's, let's read that together. And, I, and we'll slow it down just a little bit. I want you to be mindful when you're reading. I want you to apply it to yourself. Psalms 116 and verse 1. Go ahead, Sister Claire, go ahead and put that up there. And we're going to read it together. It says, I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplications. Go ahead, Sister Claire, just roll through them for the first nine verses. Verse 2. Because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death can pass me, and the pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I beseech Thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low. And he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountiful with me. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Oh, hallelujah! Saints of God, that's our promise today. He'll deliver our eyes from tears, our feet from falling. We can walk before Him today in the land of the living. We don't have to just know the answer to every circumstance. We don't have to see every outcome from the beginning. We don't have to know the way things are going to turn out always. But the one thing that we can trust upon is we can trust that the Lord knows exactly where we are. He knows the conditions of our heart. He knows our uprising. He knows our downsettings. There is not one thing about us that He doesn't know. And He knows exactly what we need in a time of trouble. Hallelujah. He is an all-time God. Hallelujah. Praise God. He is a mighty God. He's the greatest of all. Hallelujah. Woo! Praise God. He is the greatest of all. Lift Him up. Lift Him up in your day. Mm. Lift Him up in your words. Lift Him up in your songs. Lift Him up in your home. Lift Him up in your car. Lift Him up as you're walking. Lift Him up as you're exercising. Lift Him up as you're talking with your friends and your family. Lift Him up. Oh God, every day, in everything. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Hallelujah. He is the Savior of humanity. He's not just the Savior of the strong and the mighty. Thank God. He's the Savior of the weak and the lowly. Hallelujah. He's the Savior of you and me. He's the Savior of the young. He's the Savior of the old. He's the Savior of, the, of those that are oppressed and those that aren't. He's the Savior of the wealthy. He's the Savior of the poor. He's our Savior. Hallelujah. He's our friend. Our greatest. He's our hero. He's our greatest resource. Praise God. Above all, let His name be praised. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. We'll be dismissed here in a word of prayer. We continue to pray for Brother Smith and the saints of God in Nacogdoches. Remember my son, he's traveling home today. 
Uh, we want to remember Sister Rachel. I understand she's been feeling poorly, possibly with COVID. That's Brother Michael's daughter, and let's remember her and her family. Let's ask God to protect this nation, deliver us from this, this curse of sickness that's plagued us for so long, and then all the other things that go with it, and the, the depression and the anxiety and the domestic violence, all those things. It's, it's amazing how just one thing comes unraveled and everything just kind of gets out of sorts. God knows. God knows all about that. I want to remind you that Brother Bud's funeral will be live streamed at 2 o'clock. Um, I posted a couple links on our Facebook page on how you can access that. Um, and you can go find that if you need to, or you can contact me if, if you don't know how to do that. Um, and then take the Lord with you. There's an old song that says, Take the name of Jesus with you everywhere you go. It will joy and comfort give you. Uh, and so let's do that. Let's take his name. Let's take his promises. Hallelujah. Let's stand. Let's give him a, a, just a great big praise. Hallelujah. I will praise you, Lord. I will praise you. I will lift you up, oh God, above all names. You're my hope, my strength. You're my greatest resource, Lord. Hallelujah. You're my source of joy and my comfort. Your word, your spirit, Lord, let it come in my life and give me direction. Oh, hallelujah, and bring peace that passes all understanding. Oh, God, lift us up, Lord Jesus, in your spirit. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Heal on all my shine. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. God bless you, everybody. Have a good week. Thank you, visitors, for being with us. We're so glad you were here today. Praise God. All right.